Hello and welcome to this special episode of Focus on Amaki Obakeye. On the show today, we'll look at a recent effort to curb medical tourism and spotlight the core healthcare needs of Africa. The African Medical Center of Excellence is a visionary initiative of Afrexim Bank and executed through collaborations with both international and Pan-African partners. The 500-bed facility in Abuja, with an initial investment of $300 million for the first phase, plans to provide world-class medical care and groundbreaking research. I'll bring you highlights of the inaugural conference, which is positioning itself to become a platform where African leaders, policymakers, and stakeholders in the medicine and science fields exchange insights in line with the objectives of the African Union's healthcare goals outlined in the Agenda 2063. The inaugural African Health Forum aims to serve as a platform for African leaders, researchers, policymakers, and stakeholders to exchange insights, discuss challenges, and explore opportunities in the realm of medical and scientific fields to increase awareness and collaboration in the areas of research, innovation, and public health throughout the continent. The event starts with an address by Benedict Orama, the chairman of the board of the African Medical Center of Excellence, appointed by the board at their inaugural board meeting in Cairo in October last year. A present bank launched its fourth strategic plan spanning five years, uh, 2012 to 2016. It was launched in 2012. The idea, the, 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 the initiative to push this project can be traced to 2013. In 2013, I fell seriously ill and nearly died. I was evacuated to King's College Hospital, London, after we had, at our bank had, checked everywhere in the world to find where they would get the best expertise for the kind of condition I was diagnosed with. Three independent checks all went back to one name, Professor Gula Mufti. So we contacted Professor Mufti. And he was kind enough to agree to receive me immediately. And he not only agreed to receive me, he also started giving advice to the doctor who was handling my case then in Cairo as we prepared for the evacuation. It was a difficult process of the evacuation because I had to be brought there before a weekend. We managed to do it, but the experience was not easy. But all through that period, through 2013, when I was in the hospital, we became very good friends. And when I recovered, the issue was if I didn't have the support of our flexing bank, if I didn't have the opportunity to come to King's College Hospital in London, if I didn't have the opportunity to find the Professor Gula Mufti, no matter what it cost, I wouldn't be alive. But then, all through the process while I went in and came out of coma, I always ask God, I know you will never come out to tell me why you, you kept me alive. But I want you your wisdom to find a way of showing me. And a few fortuitous events led the convergence of views I found out of Professor Mufti's interest to develop quality healthcare in Africa. I then also remembered of our aspiration in our strategy to do the same. 
And then, as we initial discussions, he told me, concentrate on your recovery first. When you recover, you talk about it. And when I was being discharged, we then agreed that we we'll work together to make sure we put up a healthcare facility in Africa that would offer the kind of service that King's College Hospital offered to me. The problem of the of the healthcare situation we find ourselves on the continent is compounded by the fact that only 48% of Africa's 1.4 billion people have access to essential healthcare services. Based on the story I just told you, and the inadequacy of healthcare facilities on continent, it's obvious to anyone who is interested in making a change on the continent that something has to be done. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, addressing these deficiencies is indeed a continental emergency. And this forum is one of many initiatives being deployed by a Fresen Bank group to draw attention to the matter and emphasize the urgency. A Fresen Bank has over the years prioritized support for the continent's health sector through the development and launch of the health of its health and medical tourism program in 2012, through which it intervenes across most segments of Africa's health sector and facilitates the emergence of world-class medical infrastructure across the continent. It is in that context in the context of the story, my own life experience I, I, I narrated earlier, that in 2014, we launched the African Medical Center of Excellence Initiative, which seeks to develop medical centers of excellence across Africa to provide a range of specialist healthcare services. The African Medical Center of Excellence Abuja, which is less than, located less than 20 kilometers from this venue is the first of these facilities that our present bank and its partners are developing across the continent. The project entails developing and operationalizing a world-class multi-speciality 500-bed hospital facility to serve the entire African continent, focusing on three core non-communicable diseases, oncology, hematology, the hematology and cardiology and general care capabilities. The African Medical Center of Excellence Abuja is being implemented in partnership with leading global institutions, namely King's College Hospital London, the University of Wisconsin Teaching Hospital in the USA, and the Christie's Hospital in Manchester. The facility will serve as a leading center for research and development in medicine and clinical services, offer residency, training, and observatory placement programs to physicians and medical students from Nigeria and other parts of Africa. It will also serve as the largest and most diverse biobank in West Africa, enabling it to attract global and Pan African partnerships as well as a reference facility for all Nigerian and regional hospitals in Africa. It will operate position emission tomography PET scanners in, mid, uh, in Middle Africa and has a cyclotron particle accelerator to produce isotopes for specialized imaging on the facility and for export to other facilities. The diagnostic capabilities will include genomics. When operational, the facility will tackle the rising burden of non communicable diseases capital flight, and brain drain of qualified medical personnel, yielding the following benefits to Africa and Nigeria. Expected to create approximately 3,000 jobs during this construction phase and also during the operation. 
provide prompt life-saving detection and management of serious diseases to be delivered to over 200,000 patients in Nigeria and further 150,000 patients from other West African countries within the first five years of operation. I also promote intra-regional trade in medical services and strengthen supply chains in the medical and pharmaceutical sectors. I'm pleased to inform you that the development of the African Medical Center of Excellence at Abuja is well advanced, with construction having achieved over 50% completion. The facility is on track to commence operations in early 2025. The AMCE will catalyze and promote intra-African trade. It will provide educational opportunities to enhance clinical training in West Africa. We will achieve excellence in patient care, research, and education, with additional focus on promoting prevention, early detection, and innovative treatment modalities. By engaging in these important activities, we will be a spark for advancement in healthcare. We understand the challenges we face in healthcare are complex and they're multifaceted. No single institution, no matter how exceptional, can tackle them alone. Collaboration is not merely a strategic choice for us, it's a fundamental necessity. Together, we can pool our expertise, our resources, and knowledge to tackle the most pressing health care issues at all. Our work will extend beyond geographical boundaries, transcending borders to create a united front against diseases that know no borders themselves. I am really supportive of what this initiative could do to the health ecosystem, and I think you called it the value chain in Nigeria. Because we have to be honest, too many wealthy Nigerians are traveling abroad for their health care. There is a there's a billions dollar market here to tap into that can finance that ecosystem. And too many Nigerians professionals are going to other countries for their medical careers. And I include the UK in that risk of a brain drain. And Madame De Beri, we need to work together on this with NIDCOM on a reverse japa of Nigerian, Nigerian health professional. And I tell the India story because India's done it. They have created a massive value chain health system. Some of the best tertiary healthcare in the world are in places like uh, New Delhi, in Mumbai, in Hyderabad, etc. So I think, why not in Nigeria? And this is the first step. All healthcare workers NGOs, training institutions, government organizations are some of those we're reaching out to and would continue to do this until the opening of the hospital. We are determined to provide quality end-to-end -end care in the three uh, recognized, prioritized, non comical areas of oncology, cardiology, and hematology. We believe that we would be able to reduce brain drain if we get to employ some of the healthcare workers that are heading out because we provide enabling environment and we would also influence reversal of the drain. So the departments of this hospital are numerous, but as you can see, they're all connected and the care would be multidisciplinary. We would use advanced technology to provide special, specialized care in the centers of excellence, the three centers of excellence, and they would all be working towards uh, training and research, and it would be patient-centered. The international collaboration for this hospital has already started with the King's College Hospital, but we would also partner with others. There is um, the Christie's Hospital in uh, Manchester that is responsible for the cancer care in our facility. The signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between Afrexim Bank and Nigeria's Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, as well as the signing of an equity investment term sheet between the Fund for Export Development in Africa and the African Finance Corporation, were some of the key deals executed at the event. This is a significant milestone 
we've heard all about the benefits of this agreement, which is really to build a medical center of excellence that will help accelerate the delivery of healthcare in Nigeria, and also to help uh, and the entire region, as well as to help um, reverse you know, the significant amount that we're spending on healthcare. There is a lot of brain drain as well. We have a lot of professionals that have left. We hope that this will be a place where they can all come back to, to work. And we hope that we can build on this and replicate this across several um, areas across the continent. More importantly, we hope that we can train the nurses and doctors that will sustain the place. This signing uh, is um, an evidence of what is possible with this. We're going to put in our resources together. It means we're going to do bigger things, quicker, faster, and things that are more impactful to, to our continent. So I thank uh, AFC and the President their brother, Samaila, uh, for this. Let me also take the opportunity uh, to recognize the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation uh, and the Bank of Industry, the other two investors that are just about completing their process to join this initiative. Uh, we thank you in advance and, and I hope that uh, your process will be concluded uh, so that uh, we can do the big things you want to do uh, here in Abuja and indeed um, across the African continent. For Nigeria, being the first country to have the AMC facility, it serves as a clarion call to first track interventions in the health sector. We need human resources. We're bleeding human resources. 3,000 physicians out of about 5,000 a year that we train actually work out uh, of our country to many countries who are much wealthier and who are needy of those human resources because we do a good job of training our health workers. So how do we address that? So I'm really glad that King's College London is partnering with Africa Zimbang to expand the medical school, nurses school, so that we can train more. Just as we've also doubled the quota for our nursing and midwifery school. And I see the registrar here in the last few months, doubled the quota so that we can accelerate the training of the health workforce. So if some people leave, at least some will stay. That idea of managing migration is a constructive way of managing the human resources that we have while at the same time calling on the recipient countries to help invest in the pre-service training. Because what we see is that trained health workers, trained with public resources, walk away and work in other countries who had not contributed to their training. And I think it will be very good as part of this uh, effort to revitalize the Nigerian health system that we invest in the pre-service training. And in government, with Ministry of Education and others, but also calling on the recipient countries to contribute in expanding the pre-service training. The infrastructure and decay, obviously when you're not spending enough, you don't rebuild your infrastructure. Over the last several years, our infrastructure outside Abuja, in many places, have atrophied. And this year, we're investing massively in revitalizing the infrastructure in our teaching hospitals. We have quite a number of Nigerian doctors in the diaspora that have actually returned to build hospitals here. In Lagos, for instance, we have the Marshall Roots Cancer Center that I will call one of the best cancer hospitals anywhere in the world. I will have people coming from outside Nigeria to be treated there. You can go and verify that. And there are a lot more. In Abuja here, we have about four who have returned to set up their hospitals. But here's the thing. We have a pool of doctors in the diaspora that are the best in the world. One thing they can do is pull together, as we have seen what has happened here, and build more of these centers of excellence. They can do it. Is that investment? It's not charity. It's that investment. And you see, that money is spent going abroad. You can spend less than that here and get quality service. Now, when you go abroad, I don't know about you, but I'm sure you've experienced it. There's no way you go, you will meet a Nigerian doctor treating you. And they are simply the best. And we are Nigerians. We are the best in everything we do. And that is a reality. So we can pull resources together and do more of this here. And here's the thing. Fine, we have a lot of people migrating particularly in the healthcare industry. It's okay to migrate. There's nothing wrong with migrating. But if Nigeria trains more in the industry, then those who migrate will migrate. Those who still will stay. And then when they see hospitals like this, they can return and contribute to the growth and development of the country. So I see everything as a positive development. But we need to do a lot more. The enabling environment needs to be better. 
And the Minister of Health talked very well about this. You can see what this administration is doing in that regard. So I'm very optimistic. I'm very, very positive. Achieving such a feat takes shared commitment to partnerships, one that cuts across the value chain in the health sector. It was the ambition that if we are going to do this, we cannot go alone. Afrexin Bank, as you know, is a development finance institution. We have our strengths in financial affairs, in advocacy, in uh, advisory, in policy support, etc. But we are going into a new field and a new realm, which is developmental medical and healthcare facilities that are world-class standard across the continent. And we realize that if we are going to go on this journey, we need to go with partners. And uh, we identified several partners, one of which is uh, King's College Hospital London. And at that time, Professor Mofti was the non-executive director in King's College and he was a co-visionary with Professor Rama. So it was a good fit for us to work together. One thing I can say is that because of that partnership, the bank was able to do something that was extraordinary. The bank was able to take from a dream to reality. And you've seen this. You've seen the African Medical Center of Excellence coming into reality. You've seen the pictures of the building. But more importantly, you've seen the people who are going to carry out and drive that vision. You've seen the CEO, uh, Mr. Brian Dimba. You've seen Dr. Aisha, who is the chief medical officer, Dr. Uh, Gloria Roland, who is the chief nursing officer, and other uh, staff within the AMC. So we have been able to make this a reality through partnership. If you had a vision and you enlist a partner who shares the vision, then the chances of the vision coming to reality is real. The quality of the partnership that we've had and enjoyed stems from what clearly was powerfully from the heart of the those who conceived the idea. But the expertise that King's College Hospital has developed over many decades, over a century, uh, is absolutely the sort that could deliver the excellence in terms of clinical times. We have on the Abrexin Bank side resources to create the establishment, and then we've got the expertise. King's College Hospital has a strategic vision that's based on what we call strong roots, the Uberit, and that actually emphasizes the significance of King's College Hospital in the context of that. It's a hospital that employs close to 15,000 people. And a significant proportion of those, I won't put exact figures on it, but more than a couple of thousands are from West Africa. Yeah, they may have been proceeds of Japan. Come over there, but the reality is they contribute to the functioning of kings. So it'll be fitting, therefore, that if there was going to be an NHS expert-based hospital, that's going to partner with this vision, that's going to reverse the brain drain, going to reverse the tourism. It makes sense for it to be King's College. Connecting in people in this context is about the team. It's about being listened to. It's about being able to contribute in the areas where you feel you can add the most. And through our partnership with Kings, they are so open to receiving that input and advice and, and really working as a single team. And I think that's absolutely essential for a strategic partnership. And then lastly, for the Christi, it's about making a difference. And for me, that's about being bold and it's about being ambitious. And, and the Christie has had a number of world firsts. And when you look at this project and, and what it's going to do for Nigeria and West Africa and changing the healthcare system, this is really a project that supports the Christie's ethos of being bold and being ambitious and making a real difference. So for us, back in 2019, it was a really easy call to want to be part of this amazing and exciting project. And, you know, we're, we're here for the long haul and we're very committed. At the moment, what we're doing with Afraxim is working on an initial feasibility study. So what we want to ensure is that any intervention that King's College London may make in supporting the development of the medical school and the nursing school will meet the needs of Nigeria, West Africa and the continent generally. So we want to ensure that the way in which 
either King's College London or another UK university might engage in building that, that it's effectively understood what the needs are, what the type of education is, and I suppose the priorities for immediate intervention. So at the moment, we're meeting with a range of stakeholders, with the National Universities Commission, TET Fund, the national regulators for medicine and dentistry, nursing, midwifery, um, and uh, uh, et cetera, to really understand how within that framework might we build an innovative um, education provision that's driven by excellence and shares something of the ethos and the standards that we've established over a number of years at King's College London. Um, and one of the key elements that we would bring to any project of this type, and certainly in our early stage thinking in the way that we are now, is probably about the centrality of research to um, the development of the education provision. With the initial capital outlay for the first phase of the AMC Abuja at nearly $300 million, plans are to scale this up to $700 million upon completion of the project's second phase. Commission of the facility is set for 2025 and this will be the first of many being considered across Africa and will serve as the headquarters for AMC on the continent. Well, that's all we can take on this episode of Focus On. Until next time, I'm Akim Obakeye. Bye for now.